Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Oh, he had commented on a video that I did on creating a correct, a basic correct sentence structure and I used the tangible contract word sun, S-U-N, in it. And, uh, you know, I guess he took issue with that, with what I said in it. And uh, we were going back and forth and then he says, thanks for your feedback, I really appreciate it. I'll try and comment my sentence in my next comment. Or I'll try and correct my sentence in my next comment. And as for what's tangible contract and what's not, my point was that I don't know if the sun is emitting the heat that I feel on my body, but I do know that I feel heat on my body. And that's just me being honest and factual. And what I did was, Dylan's voice, I shared with you how one could certify that if they wanted to, if they're open to it. That's like saying, you know, if you're outside and you feel the wind blowing on your face, well, you can't certify it's the wind, is it? Well, yes, you can. If we all come together and say, okay, what's this sensation we feel? That's wind. You want to call it wind? Yeah, I'll call it wind. Okay, there's two. Two certification. We just provided a continuance of the evidence. It's a sensation we feel, and so therefore you have the wind. As far as the sun goes, I step outside. I'm on my porch, okay? I don't feel the sun because the, the porch is blocking the sun. And then I walk out, and boom, there's the sun. It's really bright, and I feel the heat on me. Cool. Okay, so I go like this. Now suddenly I don't feel the heat on my face. I feel it on the backs of my hands. And then maybe I turn around. Now I don't feel the heat on my front. I feel it on my back. And then I walk around the other side of my house where the sun's not hitting. Now I don't feel it either. I don't feel it over there either. And I can bring you along and prove this to, to you, Dylan's voice. But, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, if you want to say that you're not sure about that. But I like to keep things very simple and certifiable. And not necessarily try to convolute things. But, of course, you know, it's your choice to, to handle these things however you want to. But in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, something as if the, you know, the sun emitting heat is easily certifiable. And as you say, I have no first-hand witnessing or closure on space shuttle or ionosphere. I have to throw those conjectures out the window, so those analogies wouldn't go into my claim. Unverifiable for me. The only thing I have closure on is the sensation of heat felt on my body as I. So I use the word atmosphere, but I'll try to use a different word that hasn't got the negation of at. Actually, it's a negation of a. Vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. Cheers for the reminder. Uh, mainstream rhetoric says space is either cold or has no temperature. Okay, so that has nothing to do with anything because it's mainstream fiction, whatever. So thank you for the comment, Dylan's voice. Hope this helps you on your path to further closure on your, I guess, relationship with the sun. Next comment comes from the Learner 1000 and they say, Dear Jason, thanks for the correction. I now have closure on the following. Only one verb per correct sentence structure is allowed. Perhaps I missed that along the way. 
which answers my question as to why you didn't use it in your syntax after New York. Number two, to never use someone else's name, and even if it's an example, as I did with your example, or use a city location to demonstrate where the heat sensation location occurred. I was trying to be precise as possible. Okay, to address this, um, that's just part of the rules of correct sentence structure. One verb per sentence. That's it. That's all that's needed. And that's the way the mathematical interface works. If you put two in, it voids the mathematical interface. Um, you can use someone else's name as long as you're not making a claim for them. You can use them, you know, as something you witness them doing or something like that, but you would never use it uh, to make a claim for them. You can make a claim that you witness them doing something or what you think of them, but you would not make a claim for them is my point. Uh, of course, you could use a, a city location to pinpoint something, but you must position it correctly, especially if it's a compound fact. You have to have hyphens in there, you have to have tildes, and you have to have your position on Lodial. As I gain more knowledge of correct sentence structure, and when I know or think I know that I have closure on the grammar, I will contact you to get rid of the rough edges. Well, thank you, the Learner 1000. Um, if uh, you'd like to expedite the process, you can even contact me now. So here's the comment where Dylan's voice corrects his sentence, and he says, For this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the witness, with the earth's air of the heat, with the location of the noon. Oh, okay, Greenwich Mean with the sensation by this witness claimant. It was great up until the 12 colon space zero zero, which basically voids the mathematical interface just like the name does at the end there. Dylan hyphen David hyphen Brett. See, you put the, the hues in brackets, but you didn't put the colon zero zero in brackets. Do you see what I'm saying there? Because you basically put a of the noon, comma, 12 of the zero zero, comma, which would not be correct. So that's why I explained uh, in my sentence structure in that video why I do things the way I do with writing a now space location. I would just use 1200 zero, zero for that location. And if it were midnight, I would use 0000. zero, zero, zero. No colons necessary. It is a now space location, easily certifiable, especially if I put Eastern hyphen standard after it. Again, you know, I've been doing that for five plus years now. It, uh, it works for me. Never had a problem with it. And I've also never had a problem certifying the heat of the sun. Dylan is definitely his own thinker, and I can appreciate that. Uh, so, Dylan witnesses the Earth's air of the heat. The location of noon, Greenwich Mean. So that's his personal um, sensation of Earth's air. But what if he were underground at noon, Greenwich Mean, would he still feel the Earth's air as heat? See, that's kind of a muddy sort of conveyance there, to my mind. Because my mind automatically goes to specificity. 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 Specificity of the, of the conveyance. For me, you know, the, it's, a, it's a great effort. The positional sequencing is awesome, except for the 12 colon space zero zero. Uh, so great job sequentially on the sentence. Uh, thank you for uh, commenting. Oh, here's from uh, here's one from Jeff Baird, which I did an entire video on not too long ago. Uh, 
He says, regarding the upfront template, David's upfront boilerplate quoteranto was full of mistakes to force the recipients to learn the grammar by correcting the mistakes. As I stated in the other video, that's a complete assumption in my mind. I mean, how, how, how does one do that? If you have a textbook, a Russian textbook, and you want to learn Russian, and you only speak English, and there's mistakes all over the Russian textbook, how are you going to learn it if you don't have the correct thing to study? You only have the incorrect thing to study. That makes absolutely no logical sense. With your videos, I've slowly began to correct the problems in David's butchered document. What if you released a boilerplate full of document full of mistakes? <laughs> how about no? Because as far as the balance of the honor and the grace, and to use a fiction term, integrity, as a tutor, I would never do something like that. I would never release something like that that I think would get people into trouble. And people have gotten into trouble from using those boilerplates with mistakes all over them. Them, matter of fact, they've gotten into prison trouble over that. Next comment comes from Isaac Thomas. Thank you for your membership, Isaac. And he says, the word forming element, ION, is a positive performance contract suffix. Therefore, location is a condition of state which is tangible. I don't know what ION suffix has to do with tangibility or non-tangibility of a word. I don't see the connection there, Isaac. Your finite mean makes a lot of sense to those who have closure on the performance of the functions of word forming elements. I did do a video on that, and if you find this comment on my YouTube channel, I think I do post a reply to it with a, with a link to that. The first time I heard you make the claim, everything is contract, I struggled to comprehend the idea. I recommend everyone have closure on the functions of the word forming elements, which will help establish the psychology of this technology, as it is a core principle. Well, yes, of course. If you're going to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, you must learn all three elements equally. Correct sentence structure, parse, and syntax. And the part he's talking about is parse. Next comment comes from Rube Star, and they say, Can we get your opinion on the Ukrainian war if you haven't already given it? I think I pronounced that incorrectly. I think it's Ukrainian. Um, no, I don't really, uh, that has nothing to do with the grammar at all, really, and I've never been there, I don't know anyone from there, I know people from around that area, and the most I would say about it is it's not what the majority of the mainstream media uh, has presented definitely not but again you asked for my opinion there it is and then Rube Star says I didn't mean to be off topic just curious since DWM often talked about wars being based on post offices and countries coming out of bankruptcy after specific time frames thank you for your response yes and that's all fiction nonsense concepts bankruptcy fiction concept it's all about making that. Here's another one from Jeff Baird, who, by the way, I've since blocked, and, and you'll see why in a minute here. Uh, if you watched my other video, I did, pub <clears throat> I did publish this comment already. It would be appreciated if you posted my email and read it to the audience. I published every single one of his emails and read it to the audience. There's a lot of stuff left out, like disclosure to the customer of the mistakes and $2,000 I spent on workshops going over every word of the boilerplate document. So he spent $2,000 going over every word on the, as he said, butchered boilerplate document. Who did he go over it with? I don't know. Did he go over it with David Whit Miller? Did he go over it with You Are Law? I, I don't know. It's not specified. But what is specified is he says... Your show, your choice. For the $2,000 I spent, I got $100,000 back. Worth every penny. So he spent $2,000 on a shit template and got back $100,000. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, so 
So why is he here? Why is he asking me to handle his cases? Why is he offering to fly me out to California to handle his case if he spent $2,000 on a butchered boilerplate and got $100,000 back? He, he should be an old pro at this. Something's fishy about that. Next comment comes from someone named Corey. And uh, this is a comment on my Live Life Claim video that I did. Well, one of them. I think. It's the mini class. He says, Isn't this how we make our claim? Back of BC. I am. What's what's BC? Is that is that my mark in time, like before Christ? Or do they mean birth certificate? Or, I don't know. I am. I am. Adverb verb. Why would you put adverb verb on the back of your BC? Accepted for value. Paid to the order of John Doe. In accord and satisfaction with <laughs> BOE Act 1908 by Accommodate. And in a colon space, John Doe. Are you kidding me right now? This individual, just by what he's saying here does not have a clue about how correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar works. So payee BC number, place drawn treasury, one dollar stamp, five C stamp, five C five cent stamp dated signed in blue thumbprint, forty five degree angle sign what? Does our blue thumbprint have to be at forty five degree angle or as long as it covers the stamping page? <laughs> I think what I did was uh, I responded back, uh, no, and then I said, this has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, which it doesn't. My regular viewers and members are going to be able to know that in a heartbeat. So then this is the, I'm putting this up here because this is the reason why I blocked Jeff Baird, because he starts talking about other things that have nothing to do with correct sentence structure, this being a grammar channel. He says, Robert Michael offers a template that has saved my house multiple times by placing the trust property into private out-of-state charity. This stuff nobody talks about. I don't know who Robert Michael is, what that has to do with anything. But it's great that it saved your house, that your house needs saving, and, and Robert Michael is able to save it. Again, I don't know why you're here if you've already been saved. And he says, your law's foreclosure document was turned into a divorce was turned into a divorce into a marriage investment contract trust my brother walked away with 80 percent of the contributions nine hundred ten thousand with four alcohol related arrests without an attorney all through contract trust law if my brother would have gotten an attorney he would have lost it all well that's uh I really don't know what to say about that other than it has nothing to do with correct sentence structure and I did warn Jeff about it but he continued to post stuff and if you watch the video that I did where I audit the emails and stuff Jeff Baird is not someone who listens or pays attention to what other people says judged by based on his responses um, he either doesn't comprehend what's being said or he just doesn't care and ignores it so that's why he's out of here. And one final one from Jeff. He says, the holy grail is to syntax Robert Michael and you are law trust contracts into correct sentence structure, parse syntax, positive, con positive contracts. It's, I don't know what that is, but I think the words he's looking for are correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar. And that is not the holy grail. The holy grail is the holy grail and I have no desire to do anything that has anything to do with you or law because I don't need it. It's not needed when you have closure on the grammar. And I did offer Jeff Baird a workshop, which he doesn't appear to want one. So, cool. So this is the Corey Fellows response when I said it had nothing. What he said about the live life claim has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. He says... <coughs> Absolutely it does. Correction. The $1 stamp goes on the front top right. We write except for value on the front, right? No. I mean, I don't know who we is. Because <clears throat> I'm certainly not part of that. 
maybe Corey has a mouse in his pocket or something. But a sep for value is pronoun, adverb, verb. Why, why would you put fiction babble in your live life claim? Unless you don't know the grammar, Corey. And then they will write, they will write, pay to the order of on the back. No idea what he's talking about. <sighs> Again, nothing to do with correct sentence structure. I mean, Corey can write whatever he wants to on his fiction babble document because it's a fictitious conveyance of grammar, and that's about it. And then he says, oh, we are familiar with correct parse syntax grammar. Well, they may be uh, familiar with correct parse syntax grammar, but I'm talking about correct sentence structure, communication parse syntax grammar. It's definitely different, obviously. For the knowledge is with the father, isn't. I have no idea, because that's not correct sentence structure. But any hoot, you never answered that question. Yes, I did. I said no. Right off the bat, I said no to your question. I don't know if Corey has multiple personalities or, again, if he has a mouse in his pocket. No idea. So, Corey, if you want to learn the grammar, might pay to do some due diligence and study some of the 600 videos on this channel because what you're talking about has nothing to do with the correct sentence structure live life claim at all. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. Ooh, here we go on to the uh, TikToks. Uh, someone named Celeroni says, So what? I only care if he is genuine or not, and so far no one has come up with anything to show he's fake. He's talking about Russell J. Gould. He's got the world on his shoulders, so it's okay for him to let off steam. Leave him alone. Some say David Wynn is Rothschild puppy. <laughs> okay, so as far as Celeroni is concerned, Russell can act as crazy as he wants to because he has the world on his shoulders. Wow. Okay. I bet he probably has back problems too, huh? That's pretty heavy. So far, no one has come up with anything to show he's fake. Well, I don't, I don't know if he's fake or not, but I can tell you he doesn't use correct grammar, and I've definitely shown that multiple times with the continuance of the evidence, Celeroni. But again, you know, these TikTokers, they, they just kind of come in with hit and runs, you know. They come in and flashbang, and then they leave. They don't bother to do any research, any due diligence, or anything like that. At least that's what I've found with the majority of them. Now we have... Someone named Colin Michael hyphen Ryan space colon Robesar, which just by the way that they print out their name shows me that they don't have closure on the grammar. They say might makes right means execution of the traitors who wrong lead people for ages. So Michael Ryan is in favor of murder and killing. Your volition is to make a good man look bad via word games. Oh, so correct grammar, again, this is uh, the Russell J. Gould uh, cult followers. Cra correct grammar is not, is not uh, the most important thing here. Because uh, when, you, when you call them out on their incorrect grammar, they say you're doing word games. So what does the fiction system do? Word games. What does the legal system do? Word games. But when I use correct grammar, it's word games. Because Michael Ryan probably doesn't possess closure on the grammar, which I can, well, I'm 100% sure he doesn't. He liked the video, though. That's nice. If Russell wouldn't have captured a flag from the fiction government, then we would be ruled by kings of monarchy. This man is wrong leading. Oh, he's definitely a cult follower. He's just using the word wrong leading. And by the way, Russell didn't capture the flag, Michael. David Wynn Miller did. David Wynn Miller captured the flag. And then, uh, if you follow the storyline from the Reno seminars, because you must be a newbie here, Russell basically outlines and certifies that he physically assaulted David Wynn Miller until David Wynn Miller acquiesced to sign over the copyrights to the flag, to Russell. But as we all know from Russell... Russell's own mouth, war negates contract. And if your contract doesn't have correct sentence structure, that negates the contract. 
So both of those things are happening here. Capturing something is an act of war. Using correct grammar negates contract. War negates contract. I don't know how much uh, more blunt can be about it. And then he uses a, a bad word here. And if it weren't for that 92nd degree Freemason that you're referring to, as in David Wynn Miller, there wouldn't be any uh, quantum grammar in the public, would there? Show me the spire on one of Russell's flags. Well, Michael Ryan, if you go to my YouTube channel, you would definitely see it. Or even if you just scroll down a little bit in my TikTok videos, I show it, an example of it. You could go to his website and look at his own documents, either the Federal Postal Court website that he has or his last flag standing website that he has. Just takes a little bit of effort on your part, Michael Ryan, to do that. But uh, I'm sure you won't. Ega0117 comments on Continuum Conversations 1 with my student Nathaniel. And he says, why wasn't this taught in, or they say, sorry, I don't know if it's a he or a she. Why wasn't this taught in schools? And I think I responded that you know, it's a rhetorical question, isn't it? I don't think it existed before, what, 1988? I think is when David Wynn Miller claims to have broke the mathematical interface on grammar, 1988. So, I mean, the, the public educational system was well in, in full swing by then. I mean, way before that, hundreds of years before that. So, I mean, how can something be taught if it's not known? Ah, this uh, individual is uh, talking about a webinar that I'm putting together for July. And they say, hi, Jason, definitely I'm in, but not, for, not sure about my schedule. So my question is, can you record the webinar? There are a lot of people with the same schedule issue. Now, uh, my response to that was, I probably will record it. But the value of it is to be there in the now space, to be committed to it, to step up to the plate, do the donation gift, show up on time, and be there with your questions ready. And then we'll go two or three hours and uh, complete it. And then what will happen later probably is I may make that video available on a different website for maybe probably a higher minimum donation gift for those that want to see it. So that way, it perhaps might inspire more people to attend uh, the actual live webinar, because that's the whole point of doing this, is to see how many people will actually step up and do it when they see that it's a $42 minimum donation gift. And then probably when I make it available, if I make it available later on, a couple months down the road or whatever, I might make the minimum donation like... $66.06 maybe. And people ask, well, why do you use numbers like that? Well, quite frankly, the reason I use them is because it catches uh, individuals like you, it catches your eye. Um, people that like to look at numbers and say, oh, that's this or that's that. The value of something is what you put into it, what you ascribe to it. If you think that means something to you, then it does. Uh, but that's all fiction nonsense. A number is just a number. The final comment comes from Jay Rumbleseed, and it comes in the form of a question. Is for the claim of live life birth of the claimant with the void of the claim with the verbal claim of the void owner with the steward claim of the claimant with the void authority by the lactominion claim? Wow, that's a mouthful. Let's read it backwards. Is for the lactominion claim of the void authority with the claimant of the steward claim with the void owner which owner bow in front of a consonant particle of negation and I don't know why ship would be in brackets I have no idea why ship would be in brackets of the verbal claim with the claim of the void with the claimant by the claim of live life birth so that's very muddy to me. So let's look at the plain English translation. Can you claim a live life birth if you are not the owner of the live life? Well, the short answer is yes. 
uh, because if you have children and you know the grammar, like for example, my children have live life claims, but I'm the steward. I'm the postmaster bank banker of those documents. I autograph over the stamps. I thumbprint it. I take authority over it. My name is in the copyright copy claim section of the child's live life claim. They are still a live life claimant. I just take jurisdiction over them. It's the same thing for you. If you buy a live life claim from someone and their name is in the li and is in the copyright copy claim section, it's just like as if you're you're their child. They have jurisdiction over you. They own your live life claim. They own your claim to a live life. Uh, you are a live life claimant. They just own it. <laughs> it's that simple. You've handed it over to them. That's the, so the, the short answer is yes. You can be a live life claimant with someone else owning the copyrights to your life. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again. And I'll see you in the next one.